Looting is a common occurrence in war, happening in virtually every conflict. But what is its impact on war itself? Is it technically allowed? If not, what are the consequences of going ahead with it anyway? And here's an interesting question to ponder. Could the soldier's desire for plunder become a weapon of revenge wielded by those who endure the act? Let's find out. Looting has always been a part of warfare. In ancient times, military leaders often rewarded their men with booty for their services in the fighting. The plot of Homer's Iliad, the world's most famous war story, centers on a quarrel over the proper distribution of the spoils of war, in this case, a captive woman. As militaries evolved, some armed forces came to see looting as more of a problem than a solution, as it eroded discipline and created problems with the local population. In the current United States Armed Forces, looting is strictly governed by Article 108A. According to this article, looting by American military personnel is punishable by a bad conduct discharge, forfeiture of all pay and allowances, and confinement for six months. If the items looted exceed $1,000 in value or involve firearms or explosives, the punishment increases to a dishonorable discharge, forfeiture of all pay and allowances, and confinement for five years. These strict laws have not stopped looting entirely, but are a sign of the Pentagon's commitment to prevent the type of looting seen by American soldiers in World War II, where the practice was technically illegal, but nevertheless widespread, with many officers turning a blind eye to the realities of what went on. The strict governance of looting is far from true of the Russian military in Ukraine today, where looting is a policy of war and statecraft for the Kremlin. Unfortunately for Russia, the results of looting haven't always been to the invader's liking. In this video, we'll look at the reports about looting in Ukraine and how the victims of this practice have found creative ways to use the age-old desire for booty as a weapon to get back at their tormentors. The Russian military in particular has a long history of looting which informs its conduct in Ukraine today. Mass thievery was widespread in the Soviet era. In a preview of things to come a century later, the Bolshevik invasion of the Ukrainian People's Republic in 1918 saw looting as a deliberate tactic of war implemented by the operation's commander, Mikhail Muravyov. Widespread looting and destruction in the capital Kyiv resulted. Muravyov was eventually punished for this policy, but the practice persisted in the Russian ranks and became institutionalized. Looting was a fact of life in the Red Army in World War II, with everyone from common soldiers to the Russian commander Georgi Zhukov profiting from the practice. The most famous collection of valuables the Soviets looted during the war was the hoard that came to be called Priam's Treasure, which was discovered by the archaeologist Henrik Schliemann in 1873, while digging in the modern city scholars believe was the site of Homer's Troy. Ironically, Schliemann himself looted this treasure out of Turkey. The Red Army took these artifacts from Berlin back to Moscow. This act retroactively was legalized by the Russian Federation. The treasure remains the subject of dispute between Russia, Germany, and Turkey to this day. Although the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991, the spirit of looting remained in the military institutions of its successor state. Looting was part of the brutal experience of the Chechen Wars in the 1990s and early 2000s, and was also on display during Russia's Georgian campaign in 2008. One of Georgia's legislators at the time, Givi Tagomadze, said of the Russians, they behave like medieval hordes. They take away computer equipment, but that's okay. But household items? Stools? I do not know where they live. Probably, Russians have neither military bases nor normal houses. It looks like they are not paid money, but are offered to live off the loot during such raids. When the modern invasion of Ukraine began, it did not take long for reports of looting to circulate. Security camera footage in the stores of Belarusian delivery services showed many Russians returning from the Kyiv front, waiting in line to send looted property back home. On March 12, 2022, when the war was only about two weeks old, the Ukrainian intelligence services reported that looting was already epidemic among the Russian ranks. This mass thievery was partially a matter of necessity because of Russian logistical difficulties. Being deprived of supplies, Russian soldiers had been instructed to go into self-sufficiency mode. Their officers permitted them to take everything they needed from local homes and businesses. The looting may have been a matter of basic survival for some of the Russian troops, one Russian paratrooper who took part in the initial operations that captured Kherson, but who subsequently fled to France and applied for asylum, Pavel Filatiev, mentioned in his reports that many of the troops were so deprived of food that they raided supermarkets, 
or household kitchens in desperation. Like savages, we ate everything there. Oats, porridge, jam, honey, coffee. We didn't give a damn about anything. We'd already been pushed to the limit. Most had spent a month in the fields with no hint of comfort, a shower, or normal food. Indeed, the food supply in Ukraine was so bad at the beginning of the war that Russian soldiers who had been posted in the Chernobyl exclusion zone took to hunting and fishing radioactive wildlife to satisfy their hunger. We'll have more stories from Chernobyl later in the video. Although some of it may have been necessary to secure vital supplies, much of the looting in Ukraine came from far more self-interested motives. Filatiev also reported widespread looting of more valuable objects like laptop computers, which are worth more than the annual salary of a Russian soldier. With such low pay, the incentive to loot is obviously magnified. Cars have also been a popular object of thievery among Russian military personnel in Ukraine. Stolen cars from early in the war were also routed back to Russia through Belarus. Ukrainian media sources claimed that Russian troops had stolen hundreds of kilograms of property per person by September 2023. Some of the stolen objects were indeed necessary to sustain a soldier's presence on the battlefield thanks to the Russian military's logistical incompetence, but many were not. Some of these war trophies were sometimes downright unusual. In an act that might have served to further corroborate some of Filatiev's claims about the Russian military lacking food, soldiers were caught stealing animals from a zoo in November 2022 as they were being forced to withdraw from the city during Ukraine's advance on it that month. The soldiers were seen on camera loading a raccoon, a llama, a bear, a kangaroo, and two wolves into trucks to be taken across the river to safer territory. The incident led to perhaps the most bizarre tweet of the war, where Ukraine's Ministry of Defense vowed reprisals for the theft, steal a raccoon and die. Why the Russians would steal zoo animals but leave valuable military equipment behind remains a mystery, unless perhaps the soldiers really were that short of food even so close to Crimea. Another of the more bizarre examples of looting occurred early in the war, when Ukrainian forces found scattered lingerie in the streets of one of the villages near Kyiv. The Russian soldiers apparently wanted to ship these stolen pieces of underwear to their wives and girlfriends back home, but did not have time because Moscow ordered its forces to retreat from the region. The result was that Ukrainian soldiers came across the stolen property and circulated the video around social media. The stolen lingerie might be strange, but it shouldn't be surprising. Intercepted phone calls have often revealed the Russian soldiers' intentions. In one of them from late March 2022, a soldier brags about having stolen cosmetics and trainers for his wife back home. Maybe even more tellingly, the wife says, that will do, it will be a souvenir from Ukraine. Why, it's fine. What kind of Russian person would steal nothing? She later tells him to take everything, take whatever you can. The wife particularly desired a laptop for the couple's daughter who was going to school and some nice-looking tracksuits. This phone call was far from the only example. Many more phone calls intercepted by Ukrainian security services show wives encouraging their husbands to steal everything they can get their hands on. In another strange example of looting spread on Ukrainian social media, Russian soldiers were caught on aerial footage looting a washing machine from a home. The soldiers carried the stolen washing machine back to a military vehicle painted with the infamous Russian Z symbol. Other household appliances, like air conditioners, have also been popular booty items for Russian soldiers. Russian troops have also been known to steal solar panels. Russian soldiers have taken to stealing farming equipment too. In early May 2022, CNN reported that Russian soldiers had stolen $5 million worth of equipment from a farm dealership in Melitopol. 27 pieces of equipment were looted in total, including tractors, harvesters, and cedars. This equipment was then hauled back to Chechnya. Unfortunately for the thieves, the equipment's owners had remotely locked the mechanical equipment, rendering it unusable. When last seen, the stolen goods were idling in Grozny. Reportedly, the Russians were consulting experts in trying to find ways to unlock the equipment. At worst, reporters noted that the Russians could disassemble the vehicles and sell the spare parts for a profit. Lower tech items were also stolen from the farm dealership. Grain and even building materials were also on the looters' list of targets. Russian soldiers have also taken to looting Ukraine's museums. Russian forces have looted artwork as a matter of course. They've also taken much more specific and ancient treasures. In Russian-occupied Melitopol during the spring of 2022, an official in a lab coat was seen accompanied by a squad of soldiers into the city's museum of local law. There, the Russians carefully took 198 treasures out of the museum. 
The museum's staff had hidden the artifacts before fleeing in the wake of the invasion, but the objects were eventually discovered by the invaders. Included among them were two 2,300-year-old golden crowns from the Scythians, a nomadic tribe often mentioned by ancient Greek historians who dominated the area at the time. Observers believe that Putin wished these objects to be taken to Crimea as a demonstration of the peninsula's cultural ties to Russia. But perhaps the most bizarre instance of looting during the entire war came in a crypt in St. Catherine's Cathedral in Kherson. In October 2022, with Ukrainian forces closing in on the city, Russian soldiers broke into the House of the Dead and took the bones of Grigory Alexandrovich Potemkin, a lover of the Russian Empress Catherine the Great and a man who played a vital role in Russia's original annexation of Crimea in 1783. Russian soldiers also looted a statue of Potemkin and took it further behind the lines. The theft of Potemkin's bones and the treasures in Melitopol in particular could serve a political purpose, with Putin using them as objects of propaganda to promote his still unrecognized claim to Crimea and his broader vision of Russian nationalism. The deliberate stealing of these cultural treasures shows the semi-official nature of the looting policy in the Russian military. Putin took steps to make this policy official when he declared martial law in the occupied regions of Ukraine in October 2022. As part of the annexation where he declared them legally part of Russia, Putin inserted language that legalized looting under the guise of preservation. Conveniently, special measures were also extended to areas outside the territories he declared were now annexed into the Russian Federation. Looting has been used as an instrument of economic statecraft as well. For example, an investigation by PBS in October 2022 revealed that Russia had sold $530 million of stolen Ukrainian grain by way of a sophisticated smuggling operation in cooperation with the government of Syria. The high demand for grain allowed the Russians to find customers who were less than concerned about doing careful inspections of the merchandise's origin. Known customers by that month included Lebanon, Egypt, Libya, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. Smuggling operations like these allow Russia to skirt sanctions and acquire currency to fund its war machine. Meanwhile, some grain was simply stolen and sent back to the Russian interior by way of Crimea. The Russian military has also used looting as a policy for the waging of war. During the retreat from Kherson in late 2022, the Russians did more than steal zoo animals or the bones of a famous figure. In a far more serious act, the soldiers took any piece of medical equipment they could get their hands on, including ambulances. They also took a particularly keen interest in forcibly evacuating doctors across the river to Russian-controlled territory. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the move was part of a policy to make Kherson the only regional capital Russia had conquered since the start of the invasion uninhabitable. However, the looting hasn't always gone well for the Russian forces in Ukraine. The Ukrainian people understood when they were invaded that the Russian soldiers would try to get booty for themselves and have adapted to this desire, punishing them for it in the process. If looting is an instrument of war for the Russian military, the Ukrainians have sometimes turned the desire for loot and free stuff around against their Russian attackers, exploiting it as a weakness. Vitaly Semenets, a Ukrainian man from Hostomel whose Apple AirPod earbuds were stolen during the Russian attack on that town, used the Find My app to track the location of the devices. The app allowed him to view the Russian military's positions as its forces retreated from Kyiv across the Belarusian border. Eventually, these devices made their way to Belgorod in Russia in preparation for the later offensive in the Donbass region. It's unknown what happened to this particular soldier who carried this particular pair of AirPods, but the incident provided valuable intelligence to Ukrainian forces. Undoubtedly, many other AirPod devices have been looted, tracked, and the targeting coordinates sent to the Ukrainian artillery or drone operators. In these cases at least, crime really doesn't pay. Other incidents of looting have led to equally tragicomedic deaths. In one bizarre instance, a Russian soldier who had stolen an Apple MacBook laptop had apparently replaced his Kevlar body armor with that device. He was subsequently killed. As to how such a thing could have happened, your guess is as good as ours. Forgive us for being a bit stereotypical, but Russian soldiers' love of vodka in the war has also led to problems for its soldiers. On December 4, 2023, Newsweek reported that dozens of Russian soldiers had been killed after ingesting poisoned vodka and other foodstuffs in occupied Crimea. On a post to its Telegram channel, a Ukrainian partisan group called the Crimea Combat Seagulls boasted that it had killed 24 Russian soldiers 
and 11 officers after its fighters offered them toxic food and drinks in the city of Simferopol, the second biggest in Crimea. According to them, two cute girls came to the checkpoint of the military unit and introduced themselves as local residents. They brought seven bottles of vodka and some snacks, fish, sausage, bread, cheese. They told the guards that they wanted to thank our boys for everything, for protecting them. The guys took vodka and food, drank with colleagues and ate, and many were poisoned. This was not the first time that poisoned food or drinks had inflicted some of the more unusual Russian casualties in the conflict. In April 2022, Ukrainian villagers in the Izium district in Kharkiv Oblast gave Russian soldiers poisoned pies. Two were killed and 28 were rendered seriously ill and taken off the line. In Melitopol in November 2023, Ukrainian partisans fed Russian members of the Federal Security Service food laced with rat poison. Three were killed and an officer was seriously ill and was taken to the nearest hospital in critical condition. Undoubtedly, Ukrainian soldiers and partisans have used Russia's supply vulnerability and propensity for looting foodstuffs to their advantage. Vodka and liquor are popular items for theft in the Russian ranks, and while not all of these drinks are poisoned, they add to the problem of elevated alcoholism in Moscow's military. In November 2022, as the Ukrainian counteroffensive was near its height of success, the Institute for the Study of War reported that Russian soldiers who were desperate to leave the front lines had taken to alcohol abuse and even self-mutilation. Ukrainian forces also claimed that abuse of alcoholic beverages was widespread in the Russian ranks. Earlier reports suggested that alcohol abuse was so common among Russian soldiers that the Kremlin itself could no longer tolerate it and had to prohibit their purchase in several regions of Ukraine, including southeastern Zaporizhia. As early as 2000, the Russian military was reported as suffering from rampant alcoholism. While the country was still in a state of post-Soviet transition then, Putin's rule and military reforms seem to have done nothing to halt this practice. The looting of alcoholic beverages has contributed to Russia's combat ineffectiveness in Ukraine. Abusing alcohol is one thing, and sadly all too common. Abusing radioactive material? That just might be unique. In possibly the dumbest example of looting in Ukraine, Russian soldiers have stolen radioactive material from the Chernobyl exclusion zone, the 30-kilometer radius around the former nuclear power plant that melted down catastrophically in 1986. The Russians occupied this area on the first day of the invasion and held it until the retreat from Kyiv. Photos provided to American media in April 2023 revealed that during this retreat, Russian soldiers had taken most of the radioactive containers that Ukrainian scientists had used to collaborate their dosimeters, devices which measure exposure to ionizing radiation. These small containers look like coins. In an interview with VOA News, Siahe Besareb, a Belarus-based science journalist, warned that if these devices are directly touched, they can burn the skin in as little as two minutes. Yet there was photographic evidence from Belarus that the Russian soldiers who had taken these radioactive calibration instruments were sending their dangerous loot back home. When wives hungry for stolen property implored their husbands to take everything, maybe they should have been more careful, because everything can apparently mean dangerous radioactive containers. It is easy to poke fun at Russian soldiers for looting seemingly useless and even dangerous items in Ukraine, but there is a tragic element in this for the invaders as much as for the invaded. As we've noted on this channel before, the soldiers in Russia's military come disproportionately from the country's poor and ethnic minority groups, in remote regions like Siberia. This has especially proven the case with the soldiers that Putin mobilized beginning in the autumn of 2022. The people from these regions often live so remotely, so isolated from the rest of the world, that they do not understand exactly what they're taking. One soldier in the Russian army stole a security camera during his time in the town of Lyman in Ukraine, which Russia subsequently lost during the 2022 counteroffensive. This particular soldier was lucky enough to make it out of that disaster intact and brought the camera back home as booty. Unfortunately for him, his misunderstanding of this object and how it transmits its data by connecting to any open Wi-Fi network led to a reality show of his inadvertent creation. The camera was soon broadcasting his home life for public consumption. Intimate and embarrassing moments, such as underwear shots, were put on display. Ukrainian viewers came to see the live stream from the looted camera as an entertaining diversion, a first-hand look into a completely different sort of life in Siberia. The soldier and his wife were completely unaware of this. 
Although the inadvertent and embarrassing reality show he made of himself is in some ways just desserts for the thief, the incident also revealed, in very human terms, that it's the poorly educated and poorly connected soldiers like these who have borne the brunt of Russia's suffering in Ukraine. However, the footage of the Siberian soldier also reveals the disregard that the Kremlin has for poor and vulnerable people like this. They are often considered expendable, a fact borne out on the battlefield, where mobilized soldiers from Russia's poorer minority regions have been the first into the meat grinder, getting wounded and killed so that people from the European Russian heartland need not. Looting in some sense, then, shows us the tragedy of war for both the victim and often the perpetrator. What do you think about the widespread Russian looting in Ukraine? What other unusual objects were stolen that we might not have mentioned? What other inadvertent problems has looting wound up creating for Russia's forces? What does the looting say about the nature of this conflict for the people on both sides of it? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. Also, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.